Hello, I'm Robert, voluntary fact checker for our Facebook group Doomsday Debunked, where we help people who are scared of many things. And this time it's about the zombie apocalypse, which most of you would think, well, how could anyone take that seriously? Surely it's just fictional. But the, the various YouTube videos and false prophets who claim that this is in the Bible even, which is a ridiculous idea, and, the, the, uh, and they just manage to convince people who don't know much about physics that zombies are a real world possibility. So the answer is no, it's totally impossible. The thing is, that in order to move at all, to even just lift up your hand up or something like that, you need oxygen, you need a supply, some supply of, um, well, you need the, you don't actually literally need oxygen for actually moving your, your arm like that. You need it to put to get your brain going so that you can actually control your arm and then you do actually have a um, certain amount of energy sources that don't need oxygen and that is what you use for a very very fast running very quickly and then you have um let me go and look at this it's the story um, you have missed the bus and start running to college for a nine o'clock a.m. exam, well, let's say example. So the first three seconds, your muscles use the ATP. And for the next eight to ten seconds, you're using um, creatine phosphate stores to provide the ATP. And then they uh, uh, start to uh, use the gly glycogen system, which still doesn't need oxygen. And finally, you've got the aerobic respiration. So when, uh, so the way to remember it is that Usain Bolt is using, he's not using oxygen when he's running, but uh, Moa Farah or any other long distance running, they are using oxygen. They, as soon as you've done your files, uh, I mean for the actual muscles. So you wouldn't be able to get very far. Uh, you wouldn't, you would be able to survive for a while without oxygen for your muscles. But what all this is forgetting, though, is that uh, you've got to control your muscles somehow. And to control your muscles, your brain has to be working or something has to be working like that. And for that, you can't, you need to have the blood circulating around in your body. And so without the blood circulating, there's no way to do anything at all. And people, who, if your heart stops beating, you won't even be able to march even for a second or two because you, you need that if, if, your, if your blood is completely stopped and without breathing or heart beating with a few minutes all the oxygen is used up and uh, it's actually in seconds you, you, without, your, without your heart beating uh, you'd be unconscious really quite quickly and so a fiction, and a fictional zombie doesn't have a heartbeat and he doesn't have, uh, or he or she doesn't have any breathing. So a zombie couldn't even do one step. Basically, dead, I mean, it's pretty obvious really, a dead person can't walk. If, if, you're, if your heartbeat is stopped and your breathing is stopped, then you're, if, even if you're not dead, you're going to be unconscious and then... Uh, uh, are these stories about people who manage to survive rather extraordinary periods of time because they end up in the in, in frozen conditions, especially young children. They just sort of are frozen, and the uh, their breathing stops, and their heart rate rate slows right down, and they basically go into a kind of hibernation, almost. But even then. Like you can't do anything in that state, and but so, some zombies, the idea of zombies is totally dead, so that's impossible. So here we are, this is what I was talking about. It's important not to mince words here. The undead zombie seen on the silver screen will never be a real thing. The brain needs to be functional in order to sense impulses to the muscles to move. The heart also needs to be beating or circulate oxygen and nutrients. With the zombies being dead and all, the heart isn't pumping, the brain isn't working and the body isn't getting what it needs. 
case closed, they're dead and staying dead. And that's that's really it, really. So uh, so now we go and look at some of the uh, and the zombies. Are, and there's nothing in life in the Bible about zombies. That's just crazy stuff. The, the zombie idea, they may be thinking about the resurrection of the dead, which is a completely different thing, which is about uh, completely ret uh, returning to life, not animating dead bodies. It's a very different idea. And then the, there are these other ideas from science fiction stories where it's not the, it's quite the same uh, zombie as the actual idea of a kind of disease, kind of zombifying disease, where they, they're they not really supposed to be dead, but just that uh, their your behaviour is affected by the disease. Now, um, it is true that your behaviour can be affected by disease in a rather obvious way. I mean, for instance, if you have the flu or something, you're going to be, if you're fatigued and you can be very tired, your behaviour is obviously affected by that. And then, in other ways, in more subtle ways, if you get rabies, then you you get very uh, you c you can't bear to drink water. It's quite a strange thing, and uh, you get uh, you get a phobia of water. So that's your mind being affected because you've got this rabies virus. For some reason, it changes your mind in such a way that you are afraid of water. I mean, actually, say if someone puts water in front of you, not only you can't drink it, you're terrified. So it's a scary thing. And it's quite a strange thing um, with rabies. And um, so, and and then this is this is a story of an ant that does, uh, but there's no fungus that can do anything as complex as this to humans. And a fungus which will cause it to modify its behavior so it climbs out above the forest floor and attaches itself to a leaf, and then and then the leaf. Um, the, fungus goes out of the ant and it drops spores down to the insects on the floor below and completes the cycle. But uh, that's that very complex behaviour uh, actually caused by modification by a fungus, that's that's only found in insects. So, but no, none of this is actually a proper zombie. As I say it's only known to happen in index, uh, insects and each fungus is evolved to infect a particular insect. And None of them, for me as years, have done anything like that with animals, so we're surely very safe from them. And of course, we'd be able to counter any such infection just with other disease. It's not something you need to worry about, even though there's a PlayStation computer game based on that idea. And actually, one of the active ingredients in zombified caterpillars, that's it's not really zombies, uh, because they're still alive, turned out to be useful in medicine. Uh, it could treat inflammatory diseases such as asthma and arthritis and cancer. Particular thing. Now lots of people get upset by this this joke zombie apocalypse page on the CDC. And they take it to be a real thing. So I, I, I used to get quite a lot of, uh, of messages about that saying, you know, look, they've got an actual preparedness page for zombie apocalypse on the US CDC, which is absolutely true. They've got a brief history of zombies and it looks, if you are not very good, so a lot of people are not very good at picking up satire. And that is what this is. So especially if you're autistic, you may find it very difficult to pick up on it this is not meant to be serious it isn't it's just a joke a very extensive joke and they bun very tongue-in-cheek they just they don't explain and they don't say at any point this is a joke I actually uh, tried emailing the person who, who wrote this and he said that he's no longer with the CDC so I'm not sure who one could get in touch with but I think given that quite a lot of people in the world are autistic and this page on the US CDC would be very confusing for them and I do get con contacted by people who have read this page and take it totally seriously and they think that the US CDC 
has got prepared in his plans for dealing with the zombie apocalypse. Which is not true at all. It's just a joke. If only could just add a little, little bit of text, a little bit of red text saying joke. So that people would understand who are not so good at picking up on satire. Um, but that's it, it's just satire. It's not a real, it's not a real zombie apocalypse. And then he was one debunk saying it if this unlucky outbreak somehow started as long as every healthy human being stayed indoors because the um, zombies can't get into houses if you've got the doors shut and all the military would need to do is to drive around down the street and capture and kill the, the zombies stumbling around looking for flesh and be easier than duck hunt so um, and in conclusion I'm not sure what that means is that domestic dog or something? in quotes it's duck hunt maybe it's a US thing I've never looked that up um, in conclusion the zombie induced end of the world as depicted in films, television shows, and comic books would never happen. But uh, <coughs> yeah, so you know, could could zombies wreck some uh, havoc in a small, isolated town full of the dumbest people on earth? Sure, but once anyone with a functioning brain heard about it, cleanup would take like nine hours. But I mean, that's if if zombies were real, but they're not. They're just totally impossible. That again is a joke. Saying you know that joking at the fiction. Now, this is the uh, this is another thing that people get mixed up about or confused by. You get you get the word zombie is often is is often used as a kind of metaphor, and again, especially people who are autistic, again often are not very good at picking up on metaphor either, and they don't realise that that's what it is. So zombie genes they're not they're nothing to do with zombies. They are alive. They've never died, they're just very old cells. And they're single cells, they're old, worn out cells that are not completely dead, but are still in the body. And you also have lots of completely dead cells, like your hair and your fingernails. They're completely dead, but they, they don't do anything. And uh, But there's some that aren't quite dead yet, and just old and not functioning well. And all the people have more of those. And so the idea of this research is to flush out the zombie cells which they think could re re rejuvenate you. And so the, uh, the semolytics are chemicals that target old zombie cells. But then it's not, the old person is literally a zombie, it's just got, you've got some very old cells, which isn't too surprising, in their bodies. They're not researching into ways of animating dead bodies. They're researching into ways to help living people to be rejuvenated. I've talked about that before, it seems to be double. Um, and that's just sort of about basically something that you, to move around you need a source of energy to power your muscles. And uh, and again, the zombies, they don't eat food. Um, they would have to react it with oxygen, but they haven't got any oxygen by breathing. And then when you breathe, the lungs extract the oxygen from the air, which still can't do anything until it reacts with the food. In order to react with the food, you'd have to have your circulating blood. So a zombie with rotting skin and stomach, heart not beating, so no blood to move the oxygen, it's not, um, not breathing, so no oxygen entering the lungs. There's no way that they can get up and walk about. Because, uh, again, they've got, they, they, they just can't eat food either, not in the way that we do, not using oxygen. Uh, so, well, yes, that's what I talked about, how you can enter a coma, a coma, where your heart beats very faint and slow, it's your heart doesn't stop completely. It's a bit like a hibernating bear, and the blood barely circulating, the body very cold, very cold, ice cold, and still revive from it. It's almost hibernation, and so uh, some people hypothesise that maybe humans have a sort of hibernation capability, that could be activated, a bit like bears do. We um, presumably lost it, but uh, maybe it can be re reactivated and so you get lots of science fiction stories based on that idea where you have a spaceship going off into the limits of going off to another star it might take even a centuries to get there and they uh, 
had this science fiction idea of whether it could ever work in reality. So these people are put into hibernation uh, for the duration of this journey and it just goes on and on and on, even for maybe for a century or more. And then they wake up and they've hardly any time seems to have passed because they spent the time in hibernation. But we don't know how to do that at the moment. But that wouldn't be a zombie. When a polar bear hibernates in winter, in a rather similar state to that, you don't call that a zombie when it comes up again, when it wakes up in the next uh, spring and goes around and doing its thing, and it's very active and alive, then it's not a, it's not a dead creature coming back to life. It's just a, a, a living creature that has this capability of going into a kind of very, uh, very slowed down state where it hardly uses any food for months on end. So, uh, so in short, uh, I'll just repeat, I have a bit of a repetition here. When I say the CDC repaired in this job, blog, I seem to have saying some things twice. Anyway, never mind. Uh, and just to explain what tongue in cheek means, uh, and here's someone who actually talked, this is an actual page about it, at the CDC site. As it turns out, what first began as a tongue in cheek campaign to engage new audiences with preparedness messages has proven to be a very effective platform. We continue to reach and engage a wide variety of audiences on all hazard preparedness via zombie preparedness. So that's there. So the tongue in cheek means a humorous or sarcastic statement expressed in a mock serious manner, which is what that entire website is about. So uh, we continue to reach and engage. So they're trying to teach people to prepare for hurricanes and earthquakes, real real things that could happen. And if you go and look at the actual list of things you're supposed to do at the bottom here, a lot of them don't make much sense for zombies. So, um, bottom documents, first aid supplies. Uh, right, well, well, when you go and look at this down here, besides, ah, oh, yes, here we are, that's how they do it. So they say, identify the types of emergencies that are possible in your area. Besides a zombie apocalypse, this may include floods, tornadoes, or earthquakes. So that's just meant to be a joke. It seems so serious if you if you don't have that uh, kind of antenna for sarc sarcasm. You seem to be saying, you know, you, you, anyone could have a zombie apocalypse, but apart from that, you know, what happens if you you've got to be also be prepared for floods, tornadoes, or earthquakes, depending on your area and what it's uh, and what the risks are. But that's not what they really mean, they're just saying that's a joke and then we're using this joke page in order to get you thinking about how to deal with floods, tornadoes or earthquakes. That's what it's all about. That's, that's really what it's all about. So that's what I think it should be. I think that's what it should be. I'll leave that up a little bit. Yes. So this is all joking. That's right, I said Z O M B I E A P O C A L Y P S E. You may laugh now, but when it happens, so again, uh, to if you if you haven't queued up on this, there's some kind of exaggerated tone that get for if you have a good antenna for satire, you would look at that and you realize that that is really meant to be satire, even if you didn't know what the zombie was, you could pick up on the on the on the tone of how it is said. Okay the tone of the paragraph and you, you pick up that there's something this is some kind of a satire and I, so I, I, I think I, I actually you know, I, I sent this chap who wrote this um, this uh, uh, the S can I sent him this via Twitter but he, he can't um, change change it <coughs> so I, I don't know I, I'm not quite sure but if, if anyone's got any thoughts about if any of you know what, what, what else one can try. I asked him and he didn't reply. I asked him, you know, what else could you do? And he didn't have an answer. I don't know. <coughs> that, that, I uh, just, just, I suppose, just, uh, it's, it's hard for people to realise how scared these people get. Because I, I'm not talking about people who just sl slightly bothered by this or even people who are just slightly joking about it and half serious about it. And talk about people who really, really seriously, they prepare how they, they get their household prepared so that they're ready to deal with the eventuality of a zombie apocalypse. 
and then I explain to them this is a joke, it's not true and that, that's what the effect of this page has had on some people and the CDC I think are totally unaware of it and even if you try to tell them you'll probably find it difficult for them to believe that uh, that people would, act, would actually take this, this page uh, seriously because uh, I suppose they just don't get so much con they just don't get these people or, or even if these people talk to them they, they don't they believe they're just having them on or something I don't know for some reason they don't, it's, it's, it's really it's quite if you, the thing is if you've got a strong scientific background then what I just said to you just now would seem very uh, obvious and clear you wouldn't even need me to explain it you would just understand that dead um, people can't walk around and there's nothing you can do that make that could li li animate a dead corpse so that it starts walking around it's just simply totally impossible but if you have a less scientific way of thinking more the artistic more the poetic and if also you haven't had the best of educations perhaps and or you've just skipped all the science stuff then uh, you you don't have that same depth of understanding of science that uh, that so you have this complete clarity that a zombie is impossible and the website like the CDC then they're writ written by people who are very very scientifically based and I find that quite often people are very very scientifically based in how they are brought up uh, they really they have to be very much engaged in the way they talk to the general public and be very engaged in it like you know people like the World Health Organization very scientific but they also talk an awful lot but all the time they're talking to people who aren't scientific so they know how to say things to them but uh, some uh, but if you don't and and you, and you have to have that openness that you talk to absolutely everyone and you listen to their story and don't and pre-decide what it is and, and, and don't say oh this, but this you can't be serious but just listen carefully to what they're saying and if you do that you find that there is really quite a large part of our population that just doesn't have the science background that so many of us take for granted of just certain basic scientific ideas and basic understanding of how science works then there are quite a few people in the world uh, including uh, people who may be very educated in other ways that just don't have that so uh, that's how it, how it happens and here's another yet another of these jokes websites it's called the zombie research society now if, if you if you put yourself into the frame of mind that I just described and you, you know, then you start thinking of you start searching about zombies and you you know, you, you don't know if you haven't got the background to see that they're not real and you find the CDC page zombie preparedness society page and you have find, find the zombie research society and where they're new, new scientists what's more and what are new scientists doing researching into zombies and uh, they treat them as if it was a real people with a neurological condition again they, they just assume that everyone uh, that everyone knows that this is fictional and it's the same kind of dry satire kind of approach and using it as a teaching tool to, to teach people about neurology and basically they, they uh, look at the zombie movies and then they diagnose the zombies as if they had neurological conditions and then they do that in order to try to treat, help people learn about neurology and they never for a moment would think that you would, that you would believe that a zombie is literally a neurological condition it's just a joke there's no there's no neurological condition that can turn you into a zombie because this whole thing is impossible so anyway hopefully this helped clear up some of put shed some light on some of these things that and, and here's another one so you've got, you've got to bear in mind oh and, and yes and then another one is this um, chronic wasting disease which is a disease of uh, so that's what that's about oh I already got a video about this I, I didn't realize that oh well here's a set there's a second video about zombies so I'll put a link to that one as well uh, so we have a short have a different take on it so um, 
Yes, so, so that, that's uh, by chronic wasting disease, which is a disease that some, uh, some deer particularly get, which leads them to stagger around and behave a little bit like a fictional zombie, but they're perfectly alive. They're just rather uncoordinated and uh, it makes, uh, makes them behave in a rather uncoordinated way because it's, they're very sick and, and uh, have somewhat neurological effects. So anyway, anyway, so I'll upload this and uh, I, I, I guess and the reason this is topical right now is that there's a fake uh, Nostradamus prophecy going around. It's not by Nostradamus at all. And the claim is that Nostradamus prophesied a zombie apocalypse. And they, 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 they take anything and they're not just some funny idea that they want to make it go viral. And then they add the word Nostradamus predicted this and then people start taking it seriously. And it's quite strange that Nostradamus has such a high reputation because he has only one dated uh, prophecy for our time. That was for 1999. On July 1999, he said that a Pope would do something which lead to a war accidentally restarting. And not the Pope started the war himself, but he did something which accidentally leads to a war restarting in July 1999. And there's more details about this particular Pope. And it doesn't fit anything that actually happened. And so, but, but people uh, have always sort of made up prophecies that not actually by Nostradamus. And they have other ones where um, they take some very vague quatrain that could be interpreted many different ways. And they, uh, and they uh, claim that this is what it's all about. And they're the things that you, the, Nostradamus quatrains are great for making prophecies after the event has actually happened and, and then re reading back into them whatever it is that happened but they're useless for, for prophesying anything in the future they always prophesy retrospectively after the events have happened and if you ask people before what does this prophecy mean they're never going to come up with whatever it is that people interpret it as meaning when something actually happens and so that, that's the way it works. So some of them are like that, and, and an awful lot of them are just made up, completely made up. The words aren't even his. Anyway, anyway, so I'll, I'll upload this now, and uh, yes, hopefully this helps some of you to realise that zombies are, are completely fictional and there's never anything. You never need to be worried in any way about zombies. Just except as a fun movie, I'm not worried you can enjoy the movies, uh, but uh, it's not a real life thing at all.